This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. Time to go ahead and kick off the international B license section of Gran Turismo 6 with a tour of Japan, a race event for Japanese cars that takes place over a series of Japanese circuits. Climb aboard your favorite racing machine from the land of the rising sun and go for gold. So we have Twin Ring Motegi Road Course, Tokyo Route 246, and Suzuka Circuit. I'm going to go ahead and use a prize card for this one, and what I'm going to be using is the RE Amemiya FD3S RX7. Why? Because the performance point cap is 600, and given the fact that these are three courses with relatively long straightaways, Suzuka might be the only exception where, like, maybe we could take, like, a 450 PP car and win. Um, with the performance point cap being at 600, as I was saying, the typical opponents can be... As you can see there, like GTR R35s or Lexus LFAs, R390s, and yeah, I feel like this car is a good balance between the super fast, like super car-ish type cars, and then the regular Japanese muscle. So it's a good balance in between. So first up, Twin Ring Motegi, and as you can tell, different music this time around. Every single license. Well, novice doesn't really count because it's not. I guess, I guess that counts as no license races, but every single category of races has different menu music. I think I mentioned that before earlier, but um, I guess I didn't. There you go. A little fun fact for you: the car already comes with with ugh. the car already comes with sport softs naturally because it is a tuner car after all. So hey, that's pretty cool. In all honesty, I've actually never driven this car in GTs five or six. I've, was this in five? Yeah, it was in five. I've only driven it in sport, and in sport it sounds amazing. Let's see how it sounds in this game. Okay, it doesn't sound as cool as it does in sport. That's kind of a given, given the fact that, um... 5 and 6 I feel like had probably the worst engine sounds of the series, but... Even then, I'm not really somebody who is too anal about engine sounds to begin with, so like, eh. WRX closed the door a bit, but that's fine. So, I want to go ahead and address one thing. I know I kind of hinted at before that um, we were going to do the Red Bull, you know, the Red Bull series, right, when we unlocked it. But I kind of had, you know, a, a thought in my head. And the thought I had was, well, given the fact that those, even though the ones in GT6, I'm going to spoil it right now, are really easy compared to GT5. Even though the Red Bull series is easy, it is a fan favorite for good reason because, you know, the cars are really cool and everything. So I want to save the, the Red Bull series for for the live streams when, when I get my internet back and the webcam. So I decided to go ahead and push it all the way back to the Super License because I what I want to do for GT6 for like a final send off is maybe a long boy stream. Maybe a long boy stream of um, the Red Bull challenges and then the, all the super license events, including the coffee breaks that we need to do still. But yeah, as you can see, the two GTRs are just pulling away. This car is really pleasant to drive. I was going to consider driving the Amuse 380 RS, but I thought, eh, nah, like we have this as a prize. And we're already getting to that point now where IB onwards, a lot of the cars we're going to buy are going to be crazy expensive, so it'll be nice to save a little bit of money. So anyways, lap 2, already got around the 07, there's the black edition up ahead. He's swerving all over the place. I don't know what he's doing. Come on, AI. Oh. He's kind of moving around and breaking a bit early and going slow in the corners. Like, Gary, it's a race. A race. So, yeah. Um, I, I am doing this... Uh, second day of recordings with IB license was obviously post commentary as you guys are for those who watched the, F, the LP in order um, that was post commentary because I'm like eh 
I, I could try post commentary on that, you know, given the fact that I'm doing this offline and, you know, without a camera and everything. Because of the stuff I mentioned before in the electric circuits video. But, um, yeah, like. It'll be cool to practice. I just hope in the next race we do get more of the OP cars. Like, give us a GTR, give us an R390, give us the LFAs, because the LFAs are bay. Anyways, at the final corner, halfway down, got another two laps to go, and of course we're already leaving the competition behind. Quite an OP car, I might consider buying hard tires just to make things a little more interesting. Or I might just leave the softs on, in all honesty, like it doesn't really make a difference. Given how slow the AI cars are in this game. Now, I believe this is the first time in the LP that we've actually raced at the full Motegi Road Course. I know we raced at the East Course before. I'm not sure if we raced the West Course yet. I don't think we did. Or if we did, it might have been in the B License section or in the Novice. No, Novice section doesn't feature Motegi whatsoever. B License section? I'm trying to think now. Um, no, I don't think we ever raced the West section in this game. That's a Gran Turismo 4 thing. I know for sure with Sunday Cup and GT4, but... But yeah, uh, this is a course that I definitely hope to see back in the future. This and the Oval. They're just fantastic courses, man. Like, kudos to Honda, you know, building this in the late 90s and giving us both a badass road course and a badass Oval at the same time. Like, what more can you ask for? I, I know there's like tracks in the US that they're kind of like amusement parks for racetracks so like uh, some of the NASCAR owned ones or SMI I'm, I'm not Speedway Motors Incorporated I'm not sure okay wait there's two companies I can't remember what the other one's called the other one is NASCAR owned it's called like ah, I can't remember it's like International Speedway ISC there we go ISC point is, is that I, I know there's some tracks in America like especially ISC and SMI ones they try to do like amusement by the way final lap amusement park style venues where let, let's say for example like Las Vegas Motor Speedway where it's like you have the mile and a half oval you have the half mile bull ring oval you have like two road courses you have a drag strip and then you have like a dirt you have like a dirt oval I think and like a dirt road course which is fine and dandy and everything like they're cool the road course I wouldn't say is spectacular or anything it's like cool for club racing if you know you really don't got if you don't really have anything else in the area and then you know it just gives you an opportunity to go racing which hey it's not bad but something like this is amazing like you literally have a, a world-class road course and pretty much Darlington 2.0 Except the line you take at Motegi is, is different. You don't run the high side like you do at Darlington. But still, it's it's one of the coolest things ever. Like, it's definitely one of the coolest tracks in the series. Well, series in the world, period. I just hope it comes back. That's my little mumble, ramble, blah, 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 blah over about Motegi. I think part of the problem too is that with the earthquake that happened in 2011, I think the with the oval being damaged, they probably can't do anything in terms of bringing the oval to the game. Probably because they don't want to. Kind of like the reason with Seattle having different roads in real life. But I mean, if they still have the data, they can still make it. 
But anyways, race number one of the Tour of Japan complete. So how much money do we get for this? We get 43,000 credits. We're doubling our earnings here in the IB section. Let me save the replay and we're gonna move on to race number two. All right, race number two at Tokyo Route 246. And look, we have an LFA and an R390 GT1 road car leading the field. That's gonna be an interesting lineup. Also Lexus ISF, which is pretty cool. Luxury boy. I'm gonna go with Chase Camp for this one. They got no match for for the rotary tuner boy. There's our stock RX-7 up ahead, our, our brother. Okay, got around Subaru. Is that the concept? Yep, it is the concept model. Crazy to see that the concept model of that NSX didn't really change much in the final production, which is always cool. There's always like cool looking concepts that change significantly between concept and production and it kind of sucks, but you know, it is what it is. Try to get around this luxury boy. He's going to his bank job in Tokyo or something, I don't know, in fashion and style. Now, if I ever go to Japan, this is a road that I really want to drive. Like, I know that some people have already made YouTube videos about it, but it's just, like, w one of my... It's one of my dream things to do. Like, of course, like... Just like just like the Nürburgring. Like, you know, I went, I drove it, I was a happy boy. Tokyo, in general, is just one of my destination, you know, vacation destinations that I really want to do one day. Maybe if I qualify for a world tour, wink wink, perhaps? I could see myself qualifying for GR Super Cup given that I have, if they bring it back that is, given the fact that I have like a whole year's worth of experience with that championship and I feel comfortable in that car, so yeah. Anyways, LFA gets us on the straightaway, no surprise there, significant power difference. Our tuner car is well equipped for for the corners, though. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, fuck. I kind of thought there would be more of a battle, but then I remembered. Oh, yeah, GT6 AI. The boy's going to be really slow around the corner. Oh, shit. I started to lose grip at the exit of the corner. Let's say, dude. Damn it, I thought the R390 would be a little bit more of a challenge. Like, I think that thing tops out like at 160, if I'm not mistaken. Which isn't that bad. Like, the gears are kind of short on it, so I thought acceleration wise it'd be better down the straightaway. But the mighty LFA and all of its glorious horsepower and its sexy sound, you know, can't can't beat it. Another spoiler. Um, yes, we will be using an LFA. We will be using an LFA in this game. I'm not telling you when, though. That will be a surprise for you, chat and viewers. I keep forgetting that I'm not streaming this, so I keep saying chat. I have to say viewers whenever I'm recording something. Then again, I don't want to sound like Super GT. 148.1 nice. Two more to go. Oh, no, 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 no. Easy. Damage to the front, but that's okay. I broke way too late. I was a bit too cocky with this car.
Like, yes, this car handles beautifully, it brakes beautifully, but it's not a Red Bull. Doesn't matter though, we're just easily getting away from the LFA in the corners anyway, so whatever. the car unsettle a little bit in the corner taking all the sausage don't blame me I like too much sausage bro put me on my strange addiction also I'm driving a lot better today because I did mention this is the second day of recordings offline because of no internet because fuck spectrum my ISP but um yeah, I actually found my um, my auxiliary extension cord or my headphone jack extension cord, so I'm actually listening to audio now. So I can actually hear my shifting points and stuff. Hooray. Final lap. We have a huge lead over the LFA. Another brown, code brown moment. I feel like this car doesn't really like the curbs too much. And again, this is probably one of the best cars I've driven in, in this game, easily. I keep looking back trying to look for the Lexus and he is nowhere to be found. Whoops. Almost 15 seconds ahead. Pulling out the can of whoop ass on the entire field at this time. this front straight away. We're almost done here. Just one more little final corner to go, a little right hand kink, and we're done. Only one more race to go. Where did our sister RX-7 finish that is completely stock and not tuned? Oh, it's the Bathurst model. Nice. P9. Alright. Sad, but yeah, the AI doesn't really move around too much. Further 40 plus K, three more stars, and on to race number three.
Easy victory. Very, very easy victory. Yeah, th this card proved to be way too fast for for Suzuka, especially with the softs, especially with the shitty AI. But nevertheless, another forty thousand credits, another three stars, and the completion of the tour of Japan. We've officially toured the entire country of Japan. Hooray! No one needs to go there in real life because we did it here in Gran Turismo Six, everybody. Now we've unlocked the mission races for the IB license. We're going to do the mission races after I complete the three tours because I feel like it'd be appropriate to do the tour of Japan, Europe, and America back to back to back, you know, because they're kind of like a similar theme in a way. But anyways, we're now at 45% of the way down, and thank you so much for watching. Next time on Grand Turismo 6, like I said before, we are going to take a look at the tour of Europe.